I came across this super interesting blog post about a concept the guy calls message obsession. So it's a cold smell that the guy claims to have invented. He puts it in contrast to the cold smell primitive obsession. So he's saying if you're pushing primitive obsession too far, you may end up with message obsession. And actually, I think the concept makes a lot of sense. If I'm understanding what he means with message obsession correctly, I can definitely relate to having sort of performed the sin and having had the realization. I mean, I vividly remember having at some point during my journey into programming come to the realization that I'm being too obsessed with creating specific names for things. Let's talk about what he means with message obsession. I'll ruthlessly steal his example. So Nat Price, I hope you don't mind. I've linked the article below. So so please do check out the article. So here's the example. Let's say that you have a system where you have a robot. You're making some kind of game and then you want to move the robot around. So you have an instance of a robot and you want to be able to send messages to the robot to make it move, to make it move east or west or north or south. So if you're being obsessed with primitives, perhaps what you would do is that you would have a move method on the robot. And then when you call the move method, when you send the message move to the robot, you pass uh, two arguments, an X coordinate and a Y coordinate, an X and a Y. So as in, if you would send two as X and two as Y, you would move horizontally two units and vertically two units. But of course, as you can see, this is evidently primitive obsession because the domain concepts are sort of hidden. The domain concepts are sort of implicit rather than explicit. By the way, please see my other video on primitive obsession if you're not entirely sure what primitive obsession is. And what I mean when I say that the domain concepts are implicit, I mean, if you pass a positive integer for X, for example, it's not obvious whether that means right or whether that means left. Is positive right and negative left or is positive left and negative right? While you may argue that some choices are more reasonable than others, it's still obvious that there is a matter of interpretation, that, that, that somebody could have a different interpretation and that there thus is information that is implicit rather than explicit in your program. So to combat this, what you might do is that you might create four methods on the robot. Move west, move east, move north and move south. And yeah, that might be better because you've made information explicit absolutely but there are still some problems and I think he, he the author of the article puts it very nicely when he exemplifies by saying that this encourages you to use conditionals it encourages you to use conditionals because you have named methods that you in other places will have to call so let's think about it dynamic dispatch you can't change a call to west to east at runtime you have to change the call at compile time. And if you want to change it at runtime, you have to somehow switch over something and then either call west or call east. A proper solution or a more proper solution to this problem, he argues, would be to make heavier use of composition. So in other words, to have some kind of direction class, instantiate a direction object, and then pass that direction object to the robot's walk method. So you have the walk method, it takes a single argument, and what you're supposed to pass it is an instance of a direction. So with that, you've eliminated primitive obsession and you've increased composability, but you still have the ability to name things because you can still save a direction into a variable and thus give that variable the name move west. And you save another direction into another variable and name that variable move east. And through that, you've almost achieved the same explicitness as you had in the example where you had explicit methods named move west, move east, move north, move south. But you also have very high composability. So I think this is an excellent blog post and I highly recommend you to go read it. Because as I said, I really saw myself as in my early days of programming, exercising this kind of behavior. And depending on where you are in your journey as a programmer, I guess it's kind of likely that, that you too recognize yourself. Very early on from my experience, it seems that programmers realize that there's tremendous value in making things that are implicit explicit. It's very, it's, it's much easier to communicate the intent of the program when you have proper names for things. But in our efforts to name things, when we are creating methods that encapsulate behavior, that are non-composable, then we're trading in a lot of flexibility and exchange for that explicitness. And if we instead learn to write code that is highly composable, we can achieve high composability and still make things explicit rather than implicit. That's it. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe if you want more code talks like this. I'll see you in the next one.